Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So I get asked a lot, what brush should I use for this? What brush should I use for petals? What brushes? Da, da, da. So I'm gonna give you my go-to brushes today. <laughs> These are my go-to um, that I use most often. You know, I have flat wash brushes, I have round brushes, I have a cat's tongue brush, I have a filbert brush, um, even a long round brush, and the different types of like round brushes as well, because not all the same. Some are stiffer, some are not. So I'm gonna go over what I use, why I use it, why I like to use it, and how to use it. That's most important, right? How to use them. Not everybody knows how to use them. There's so many different ways you can use some of these brushes. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Let me know what your favorite brush is. What do you prefer the most? Um, some people just generally go gravitate towards this special kind of brush, and that's just the way it is. I always kind of check out brushes, though. Um, at my workshops and um, watercolor retreats, I tell people like you know bring some stuff that they want me to like show them how to use and there was a new Princeton like a triangle type of brush that was kind of cool to play with so uh, I think they call it petals brush yeah I haven't bought one actually myself I thought it was okay it was kind of interesting but I think I might get one just to try it <laughs> so let me know the brushes that you like to use I like I'm really curious uh, yeah so we're gonna go over that today also check out my patreon where I have like all kinds of you know, extra tutorials with traceables and reference photos. And uh, we have like a Facebook group and, and Patreons get first dibs and all the kind of workshops and watercolor retreats that I do. And there's a link right in the description box where you click the words show more down below. But without further ado, let's get started on why I like these brushes and what we're going to do with them. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll go over some supplies that I'm using. I'll be using my uh, our 100% cotton cold pressed paper and the brushes of course the, I use I suggest that when you get a brush to use the paper you're going to use because um, even though it's a little pricey and you're playing with it it's going to help you learn how to paint with those brushes on this paper otherwise it's kind of fruitless right so let's just start with the one I use a lot um, I use the Princeton 8 long round um, velvet touch series the velvet touch series in Princeton is a little stiffer so it doesn't move, it's not floppy, it's a little stiffer, it has more control. Uh, the bristles, obviously it says, the name says it all, it's long and it's round, right? So here's the long round and here's like an, a 10 round. Do you see the difference? It's a little fatter, not as skinny. They both have the same kind of similar point, but this one's a skinnier brush and this one's a little fatter. So I use this all the time and it's great for leaves and stems and loose, I just loosened up some greens and you do the simple compound stroke with it to find out how you're going to like it. Now let's zoom in to see that and the compound stroke is just pushing down and pulling back right so imagine you have a design you're doing and doing some nice pretty leaves skinny little little ones you just go up and over and down it has a nice little point so it goes a little thin like that all the good things you can do with the long round and you can make petals with it too i use it mostly for stems right um whereas well, i showed you earlier here is the round the round is very versatile it's like the first brush you should have a round brush and i would suggest getting like a you know an an eight a six and eight a ten and twelve but i don't know if you need all those maybe just like a six a 10 and I, I mean I like the 12s because the 12s are big so and like in a pack they kind of give you uh, a 4 an 8 a 6 an 8 and a 10 or something like that but a good one like a good size I think a 10 you could use a lot of things with so a 10 or a 12 so again you can use the 10 for many things so you can do the leaves and see they're gonna be fatter much fatter than the skinny one here right and you can still have a nice point. You can do some pointy stems, skinny. Now, it really is a great point when it's new. When it's worn down, you're not gonna get this point. And I like to use in the Princeton brand because it's inexpensive, so that you can buy several brushes when it, wore, when it wears down. Also, with the round, you can make nice petals. So I've loosened up some bright rose paint here and make some pretty petals just by swooping like this 
a little control. I'm just doing basic petals. If you want to do a little more fancy petals, I don't know. But you can just do some great poppies. I just wiggle this. And it gets a nice good surface area. See? Now you can kind of do the same movement with the long round. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. There's more of a paint that can fill in this belly of the brush. And you can do little petals just by pushing down a little bit, compound strokes a little bit with this, because they're fatter. It's a fatter brush. So you can see, you can get some of the strokes just pushing down on that. That is the round. And it's a Velvet Touch series round, so it's stiffer, right? Whereas I use this one a lot. This is the Princeton Neptune 12 round. So it's floppy, really kind of loose. And when it gets wet, it has a nice point to it, but I love the looseness of it. Now I've used this on many different things and I use it for leaves, I use it for petals, I use it for all kinds of stuff. So for leaves, here we go again. Mix up some color here. Now it's, it soaks up a lot of paint. Can you see this? Very wet, loose paint. So it holds more paint in this in the brush. So you can do a lot more. So you can get a lot more leaves going here. See? The other ones won't hold as much, so you get less. But I've already done, I don't know, a whole bunch of leaves. Of course, I'm going back and grabbing some. So the compound stroke with this one is push down and pull back, and look how fat that one is. Now this has a decent point, you can see. So you can make some stems that will be a little bit thicker than the other ones. I'm going to clean that off. And it's great for making all kinds of beautiful um, petals and leaves and whatnot. I use this to make hydrangeas and all kinds of stuff. So you can go like this, loose. Uh, wiggling back and forth to make a pretty flower. I use, like I said, hydrangeas. You're kind of tapping, moving. You still have a little point. You can use the point to make swooping movements to make skinny open flowers like this. I use it for washes, for skies, various wonderful things because it holds a lot of paint. So if I was going to take some ultramarine blue, a nice wash in the sky. See, I can grab some water. It holds a lot of water, and you can kind of play with washing in your sky just with the twelve. Try and do this with the with the. This is why I say brushes matter. You want a twelve. Now you take that eight long round and loosen up the same color to put the sky in. Just doing a little one, and look, it's not going to have. Look at that. This is so much better. You got these little shrieks happening. Of course, I'm using less water, but you have to grab more paint every now and then. It's just not going to cover as much surface area as the 12. And the Neptune series holds a lot of water. It's one of those kind of brushes. It's great. And I use it all the time. Even on smaller things. It's, you got to really try to do a big brush on smaller things. Um, getting into the Aqua Elite series, I feel like this is a combination of the Velvet Touch series and the uh, Neptune series. So it's in between the two. It's their higher end line on Princeton. So it has like a, a stiffness to it, but also a looseness to it. Again, because this is a 12, it's a bigger, but it's a nice round, right? So you got a bigger belly brush here. Nice point. So let's make some leaves. Grabbing some uh, pink. Um, sorry, Prussian blue and yellow, cadmium yellow. Deep. Then here we go with the compound stroke, pushing down and pulling back. So similar to the Neptune, but you see, it doesn't, it's a little, I don't know, just the way you control it is stiffer. So a lot more control. It's a great tip. So you can do nice stems, skinny leaves, etc. And then, of course, petals. Right, for flowers. Let's go back and get that rose color. So you can do some nice petals. It holds a fair amount of water. You have a lot more control with this tip. 
the reason why I tell you to practice on the paper you're going to use because you have to get used to this. Uh, it took me a long time to get used to Arsh paper um, when I first was playing with watercolor because it holds a lot, it soaks in a lot of the watercolor and also because of the um, the roughness of the paper, the cold press. So you got to play with it. So here we can go just pushing down, making some petals this way. Simple petals. Going in and playing around with even tinier ones because it holds a fair amount of paint. And that is the 12 Aqua Elite. Another go-to brush series, fantastic. They have great travel brushes. I use them. I think I showed you one of my videos that the Aqua Elite travel brushes is what I would take with me. And they're not that expensive and they're really light and they're fantastic. So yeah, this is a great, great line, the Aqua Elite. Then we get into some of the fun stuff. This is the cat's tongue brush. Now I show this often. People ask, how do I use this? I bring this, I'm gonna show you, it makes great leaves and great petals. So the leaf, fill this up. And it's Neptune series, so it's a little floppy. I have um, an Aqua Elite. But surprisingly, it's kind of it's a little stiff, but it's not as stiff. The cat's tongue brush. They call it an oval wash, but really it's cat's tongue. So the compound stroke for this, I'm kind of twisting it. But you can make some great killer leaves with these kind of brushes. Again, pointy, so you can do some points, stems. And of course, the petals. Well, with this one, I'm going to show you. This is how I use to make like really quick, easy sunflowers. So grab some yellow, a little orange, and you're just taking this brush, pushing down, and you've got the sunflower ready to go. It's your go-to easy, easy breezy sunflower petal brush. Because it has a great point to it. Take you two seconds to make a sunflower with this brush. So any kind of pointy uh, petal that you want to do. Um, dahlias, you know, I do things with dahlias. Let's see if I can make a little sweet dahlia. Because they're all like little points. And then you go, like you do your first wash and then you go back in and do your second wash. But it looks like a dahlia, right? It's just a little point. <laughs> so that is the cast tongue brush. One of my favorites for many different things. I wouldn't use it for doing a wash for a sky, but really cool petals and leaves um, playing with the cat's tongue brush. Another great brush for really delicate kind of petals and leaves is the Filbert. This is the number eight, and this is the Velvet Touch series. So I would use this for like daisies, forget-me-nots, and leaves as well. The leaves are going to be more rounded, so let's get some leaf color going here. Grab some yellow. Okay, so I'll zoom in so you can see this one. This brush is kind of small. Use the chisel in. This is this is the flat end. This is the chisel in. So if you use a chisel in for a stem, and you want to use a compound stroke, you can just push down and pull back. You get a nice rounder petal. I mean, excuse me, rounder leaf. I kind of twist it to get the point at the end. You see how I slowly twisted this? Push down and twist, push down and twist. And then you have your leaves. Just to push down and pull back, you're gonna have like a, a short stroke. I'll show you over here. So the compound stroke in this one, it's just like a little blobby kind of thing, which works in your favor if you want petals. And I'll show you that. So you want petals, grab some ultramarine blue again, just a little dry. So like forget me not or something like that. You're just pushing down and you're making small little movements for your little teeny tiny flowers. Really simple. It's just a little push with the paintbrush and twisting. And if you twist it, use a chisel in, get some color that's orange and yellow, put it up here, hold it on the chisel in, 
make some really great daisies. Isn't that great? I'm just holding it though on its side. That shows on. Super easy to make daisies. And of course, you can do some stems and the nice leaves. Smaller, more delicate, a little twisty, kind of small, little rounded leaves. And that's how you would use the small filbert brush. Now they can get bigger too. Um, I've done a bigger brush. This is a huge one I've used in the big one. <laughs> it's a filbert brush. Um, not, this is not really a watercolor brush per se, but I use it with watercolor. It's fun. Here's a bigger one that I use for um, making uh, peonies, things like that. Big filbert brush. So filbert brush is a go-to too, but I don't use those ones often. And of course, you see me use the flat wash brush. The flat wash brush I use for practically everything. Because um, I, I think it's fun to play with something that you wouldn't normally think would be good for petals or leaves or anything. Obviously the flat wash brush is good for doing gradient washes skies so we get the sky in grabbing some water see it's flat but I can kind of tilt it you can get a lot of surface area so you've got the nice pretty sky grab water and I'll make my little sky that would be a flat wash brush playing with all this good stuff What's great about flat washes, you can play around with this the strokes. So, you know, obviously, if you want to do some kind of cool abstracts or get a lot of surface area, if you're doing like a lot of landscaping kind of scenario, so a land mass, see, you get that whole piece of land right there <laughs> with a flat wash brush. And I show in many, many of my videos, I use a lot of flat wash brushes. I also use it for flowers, and you can play around with it for stems and leaves. So as a stem and a leaf is all in the movement. It's up and twist, and look, I have leaves with my flat wash brush. And then flowers, similar, you know, twisting and turning and playing with it. The chisel in and creating some kind of funky bloom. You gotta play with the brushes. You can go back and forth like this, make a kind of funky little daisy. It might not be like rounded, so that's where the round brush comes in. But you can play with flat wash brushes. Do all kinds of things with them. Stems, little lines. Play with the brushes. That's what you do. So those are all my go-to brushes, how I use them, why I use them. And I hope that was informative. I hope you learned something from it. And you know, that's my arsenal. <laughs> what I've come to grow to love. I used to love this one brush called a liner brush. I don't use it as much anymore, but I use it every now and then. It's a really long skinny brush if I could find it. But, and this one I've tried. I mean, maybe it's because it's too floppy. Dagger brush, people rave about these dagger brushes. I, I'm sorry, I just, I don't see the, the importance of them. I think they're kind of goofy. That's just my opinion. Um, they don't make great flowers. The go-to always, in my opinion, will be the rounds for those. Flowers, seriously, hands down. So if, you do, if you're very limited in funds, get a good round brush. Um, you can get a Princeton round Velvet Touch series, cheaper than Aqualite. I, like I said, I love the Neptune because, well, even just to get one twelve to do a lot of washes for skies, and um, then you can get some like Neptune, I mean, excuse me, Velvet Touch series for other ones. So, thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. If you haven't hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up, please do so. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. <laughs> Doing over, going over techniques here and ways to use things and having fun at the same time and not being stressed out because it should not be stressful. Um, I always tell people, and everyone jokes about it, but it's true, it's just paint. 
this is not you're not you're not doing surgery here we're just doing paint we're enjoying our life and if you screw up so what you know what you do when you screw up you cut it out and turn it into a collage try that <laughs> I could turn this all into a collage paint all over it and have fun with it cut it up and put it in put glue it on like a backing of like a cardstock and make it into a card and people would love it there's no mistakes here all right guys thank you so much have a great day and I'll speak to you soon